Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. Today, we are talking about the history of the Pope Mobile. That's right. We're going to talk about the Pope train, the Pope horse carriage, and all the different ways the Pope has gotten around through the years. So, gentlemen, start your engines. Let's begin. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, we're here again, joined by Ryan Shield, Richard Pagano, myself, Ryan Delacross. Really grateful for you guys to be watching. Uh, hey, guys. Nice to see you again. Good to be with you guys again. Cast Media Studios here in Hollywood. Enjoying it. Enjoying the lovely weather. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. How you guys doing? Oh, awesome. You know, I wish I got off the plane last night pretty late, and it would have been nice to actually hop in a Pope Mobile-esque <laughs> kind of a ride, but I just took an Uber. Yeah, the Uber is the uh, Pope Mobile for parish priests. <laughs> there's like the Uber X and then the Uber Pool, and then there's maybe an Uber Pope down yeah, there. And if you slide <laughs> all the way to the right, you got the Uber Pope Mobile. <laughs> now, before we get started with today's episode, I want to make sure that everyone goes to CatholicTalkShow.com. Uh, you can subscribe to us there on any of the channels or platforms that you prefer. Make sure that you're leaving reviews for us on those platforms, especially iTunes. It helps us get it out to more people, and we really appreciate when you do that. And yeah. if you don't, we're going to have the Pope come over in the Pope mobile and chastise you. And run you over. Yeah, you're going to hear the engine <laughs> roaring. Yeah, you don't want Thump. that. <laughs> <Thump>. <laughs> I got him with the door. All right, so we all know, okay, the listeners all know that a Pope mobile is kind of a recent phenomenon because he had cars. Probably started with mules, though, right? <laughs> and then well, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a, a colt. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So the ass of a cult, the ass of a cult. He wrote yeah. in on the ass of a cult. Thanks for it. Well, it was toward the end of his, I don't know what, well, I mean, the ass Shield, of the cult would comment? mean that he was sitting on the back That's of the cult. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. No, but the ass, it's a donkey. It's a cult. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, it's just, a, I mean, other depending than, where he was sitting. Well, then he's just sitting really far back. When I mean, we talk about specifics, I mean, when we, we've got to really get down to the precise place. I wasn't there. You yeah. There? I wasn't there. Well, this is what mystical theology is all about. And, you know, these spiritual mystics that Putting look yourself, into these moments. As yeah. far as I know, there's been no private revelation saying where exactly on the donkey How do you Jesus know that wrote. I'm not the one receiving this private revelation, Ryan Chu? Just a I hunch. Can, I can, yeah, I, it's a definitely a, <laughs> yeah. it's a good hunch. <laughs> because you guys know me too well. <laughs> <laughs> so the Pope Mobile, I would say, is the most famous car in the entire world. For yeah. sure. I mean, maybe the Batmobile. But I mean, it's between those two: Batmobile, Pope Mobile. Batmobile yeah. is number two. Number two? Oh, absolutely. It changes. The Batmobile changes. So does the Pope Mobile, and that's what we're talking about uh -huh. today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the Pope Mobile is the most iconic car out there, and it really is—it's a pastoral tool. It allows the Pope to reach people that maybe in the Middle Ages that he would not have been able to reach. It allows him to, on his pastoral journeys get to places where, you know, they're going to all different types of countries and they're able to see millions of people. And it, the Pope Mobile is a more modern invention, but it's really something that I think that has opened the papacy up to the world. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And he can reach people only if the Pope Mobile is actually open aired because some of them are enclosed in bulletproof glass. Mm -hmm. They are. Yeah. So I think technically... You know, besides Jerusalem cruisers, you know, the old sandals, the first Pope mobile would have been considered uh, something called the seta gestatoria. Right. Do you know what that is? No. No. So it's just, the seat. I know seta. And gestatoria. gestatoria would be maybe a, a gesture of to some lift sort? up. <gasps> to lift up. So they, it was a, it was a chair. That's right. right. On yeah. a platform mm -hmm. with two long poles on either side, um, and there would be. Four or five guys. Four or five guys, and they'd carry him, the Pope, around on this chair. Let's just go with five guys, well, because that's actually my favorite. Hamburger. Burger. Yeah, yeah, but well, if, if there's five, then it's going to be imbalanced. The Pope's going to tip. Either one guy could be five. right underneath the Holy Father. The I got strongest it. one. Yeah, and then he's going to get squished. I mean. Depending but, how big the Holy Father. Like Papa Buono. Yeah, 23, man. Yeah, you don't want him dropping on you. <laughs> Even though he's a saint. He's a saint, but he's, he's a big saint. I don't know if you've ever heard this story about St. John the 23rd. This is one of my favorite stories of all time. So he's at this huge banquet, beautiful girl sitting across from a very young lady and very voluptuous, right? So she's very improperly dressed, immodest, right? So she, he's sitting there and he looks at her and he asks, he says, uh, would you like an apple? She says, oh, no, Holy Father, no, thank you. 
So he does this two, three more times. Pushing like apples. Apple, pushing okay. apples. And she's just like, holy father, finally. She, Why are you asking me if I want an apple? And he said, well, when Eve ate the apple, she realized that she was naked. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about driving oh, that modest point home, right? That's, that's good. That's dry that's humor. Like, I like that. That's Papa Buono. Oh, Love that guy. Well, I mean, that's what I was thinking. The first thing I thought is like, wow, could you imagine being one of those guys having to carry him around? He you was know? a big boy. He's a big guy. Mm -hmm. He was one that's, of that's what that's what spawned the invention of the car. Probably they're like, we got to get some wheels over here. <laughs> we cannot we support can't the weight. Do this anymore, and that's where the Ram truck was <laughs> invented. So the sedia gestatoria, it, it it literally in Italian it means chair for carrying. So it was the ceremonial throne that the Pope would be walked around on, so that he would be above the crowd, so people could see him. If he was just walking, you wouldn't see right. him above the crowd. So it really did serve a function, not just of exaltation or right. pompous attitude. It was so people can see the Holy Father when he was going through the crowds and giving blessings. Um, it's the chair of Peter. I mean, that's what we all honor. I mean, it's when you when you see a Pope, you know, uh, Pope Benedict was in the Pope Mobile at National Stadium. And when he drove by, I was just like, wow, this you know, spiritually speaking, it's it's the chair of Peter. It's a it's a great mystery in our church. And isn't that know? interesting? What a beautiful connection between the chair and the Pope Mobile. Yeah. And that he rides in his authority. And yeah. we think of Jesus too, riding on on the mule. Yep. This this image of Pius the twelfth, though, where he's being carried. So you'll see this. Oh, that's scary. Dude. I know, isn't that Pius scary? the twelfth knew how to pope. He totally knew how I to mean, pope. <laughs> I mean, of all this. the popes I've ever seen, he knew how to pope the best. <laughs> so for yeah, those of you, you, you have to check out our feed on Facebook so you could see this picture of Pius XII. But he has his hands extended and he's standing up on this platform that we're describing. And a number of men are carrying him around. And uh, for an older guy, he had some good balance too. He's like a cat. Yeah. The first papal surfer right yeah. there. <laughs> Pius XII. That's patron, papal, patron saint. Papal crowd surfing. So <laughs> actually- awesome. People crowd surfing. <laughs> yes. Just pass them around. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have good balance. Sedia surftatoria. <laughs> so actually it took Don't 12. say anything funny when I take a sip of coffee. Oh no, I'm trying to. <laughs> I want to get that on camera. These microphones at Cast Media are gonna be soaked. <laughs> so it's 12, there was actually 12 men who would carry it. So it took <sighs> how many people does it take take to carry the Pope? 12. 12. It's like the apostles or something. Yeah, I think that's you know, it's probably, probably where it the, comes from. And they would also come along with big, um, I guess, posts that had ostrich feathers on it. These big things behind it. Um, I, can't, I can't, I can't, I don't know what the name are, but they're huge, giant plumes of ostrich feathers. It's pretty elaborate stuff. That's weird. It Have is. you ever had like a desire, a secret, I mean, secret desire of riding an ostrich? No. Mine's pretty public, so it's really not secret. <laughs> I really do want to ride an ostrich. This just seems like that would, fun. That would make a good, you know, meme for our show. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Wonderful. Ryan Shield, yeah, you're I'm going to make it happen. So <laughs> the, the uh, Sedia Gestatoria really was one of the primary ways that the Pope would get around the audiences uh, as he was doing the procession in St. Peter's. Uh, but the last Pope to use it was Pope John Paul I. Mm. Now, he didn't want to use it. He was a very humble, simple Pope, and he was uncomfortable with the idea. But he was convinced by you know, the papal handlers and the papal household that people are not going to be able to see you. Uh, but when he died quickly after his election, John Paul II said, I'm, I'm not doing Sedia Gestatoria, Sedia Gestatoria, and he was so... That's it ended there and hasn't been used since. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they have some of these uh, setas somewhere like in the Vatican Museum. Or oh, something they like do. That. There's some in they're they're all over because oh, cool. there would be multiple of these seats. Yeah, I'm they're trying, pretty elaborate. They I'm probably make think. some in different cultures where he goes too. Like they'll create one, like a rickshaw. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> his visit to India. Yeah, <laughs> have you ever been in a no? In a actually. When um, Pius XII went to Jerusalem, there's a picture of him getting, you know, taken around in a rickshaw. There's a few popes, actually. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I love rickshaws. Yeah, they're all over the place mm -hmm. in India. Mm -hmm. Usually when a pope was elected, the tradition is that he would come into Rome on horseback. That was one of the traditions. Then there would be a procession and he would come in almost like a conquering hero. Mm -hmm. But uh, in 1800, Pope 
mm, Pius the seventh, I believe it was. He was the first one to come in in a horse drawn carriage. So this carriage is the first papal means of transportation that had wheels. Hmm. Interesting. Mm hmm. It was, and the model was the Berlin de Grand Gala carriage. It was a gift to him. It's That's really, what I was going to guess. I mean, if, you know, it was 1800s. So. Yeah. But it's beautiful, very <laughs> elaborate, carved, gilded, very plush, you know, velvet seats. It was, it was something to see. What is that, velvet? <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. Is that velvet? velvet? <laughs> what is that, velvet? Only the best for the Holy Father. <laughs> Yeah, the inside was lined with like a mushroom pattern. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, my gosh. An inventory from the papal stables in 1841 actually lists the names of the horses that drew the carriage. And there were Bandito, mm. Pompasino, Buffalino, and Capitano. So Bandit, Pompas, Buffalo, and Captain. That was the name of the Pope's horses. Pompasino means... Pompous. Pompous, yeah. That's great. So He was the, right at the front. The first Pope Mobile had was a four horsepower. I think the Clydesdales. <laughs> Do you know that Theodore Roosevelt, I was just in the museum in Dearborn, Michigan, in Detroit, and it's the Henry Ford Museum. It's one of the best automotive museums I've ever been in. Cool. Next, and really, honestly. How many have you been in? I've been in a few. And, and in, in, relating them to car shows, too, which I've been to so many of those. But being near Daytona Beach, I mean, we we have a great history yep. related to like NASCAR and all that stuff. But I was in this museum and I was walking around and they have the car, the the limo that JFK was shot in. Mm -hmm. you know, wow. They have, oh, yeah. But what was really, really interesting was they have from the late 19th century, the first steam driven cars. And then they go all the way up to more modern cars. But Theodore Roosevelt at, at the turn of the millennium. He was one who just stayed in that chariot drawn by horses instead of the what cars. the popular thing of the day was. If you were a person of status or nobility, that you had a type of automobile and you would ride in that automobile. But right. he stayed to the tradition of like, no, this is what I'm going to do. That's cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. So as uh, technology developed... We are getting away from horses and now we're getting into trains, right? That was the next development after horse-drawn carriages. It was trains. So obviously the Pope would adopt that technology. Pope Pius IX went on a, a, on a train ride and he was blown away. He's like, this is amazing. So this is when in the 18, 1850s when the Vatican, there were still the papal states and they still had their own country. So he ordered the construction of a papal railroad system that would go from Rome to Campania to uh, Castel Gandolfo, Albano. So it was taking them all around the country. And he had commissioned his own rail car. So when the Pope wanted to go to Castel Gandolfo, he had his own car. They would attach it to a train and it was its... Um, had velvet on the inside? It was velvet, <laughs> man. This thing was... <laughs> We oh, should yeah. we should get some pictures of this stuff and put it up. Yeah, I'm gonna put pictures on there. Yeah. I, uh, if you go to ucatholic.com and you just search for, uh, you know, Pope Mobile, you'll find a bunch of articles about the things that we're talking about. Cool. Um, so this car, it had open windows so that he could give blessings on it. It had a almost like a balcony on the back that mirrored the balcony at St. Peter's. That people, you know, he can go to the back and throw blessings out on. It was pretty cool throw them out mm -hmm. catch yeah there's there's actually the the station i've been in that area where the trail you could still see the rails and where that station was in the vatican oh cool inside the walls that's pretty cool yeah yeah, yeah. where you were where you almost got kicked out of the uh vatican <laughs> right around the corner from there nice yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so after the papal states fell and Italy was unified, and the Pope was confined, confined to Vatican City. He didn't really have the need for a train anymore. And he didn't really have the need for a car. He was confined to the small Vatican City, and it wasn't really getting around. So papal transportation kind of well, ground that, to a halt at that point. A train's not as flexible as the Sedas or the, you know. The, the well, yeah, you're not going to cruise through a train through St. Peter's. Right, right. But because of that, there really was not as much papal transportation going on. 
But what happened is after the treaty with Italy that gave Vatican City its own state, its own state and its own legal rights, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in 1930, he got a donation, the Pope, uh, Pius XI, got a donation from Mercedes-Benz for the first ever Pope mobile. Which, which Pope? Pope which Pius Pope? XI. Okay. It was a Mercedes Nurburg 460 Pullman, a custom built. It was the first ever Mercedes-Benz state car produced, and they gave it to the Pope as a gift. Isn't that <laughs> awesome? And I love that Mercedes was the one. I, I don't think that. I've seen it. Well, actually, most of the Pope mobiles throughout history have traditionally been Mercedes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. Mm -hmm. But, well, actually, should, you know, should put a Ferrari in there. Mm -hmm. There has been Their a Ferrari Pope mobile. down the street. Well, There's which, been a few of them. I was yeah. actually there with Pope Benedict in a an audience a number of years back when I was studying over there. And it was so cool. All the Ferraris from across Europe a number of them in, in this, you know, this group that they had, they all drove into the arms of St. Peter's Basilica in the square there, and they parked on the other side of the fountains and the obelisk. And the Holy Father addressed everybody and then recognized this group of, you know, Ferrari owners. And, you know, after the final blessing, when he blessed everyone and blessed everybody's articles and everything, they all revved up their engines and the Ferrari engines. So you just, That's oh, it was so cool. And then you just saw Ferraris all over the city all day. Mm. John Paul II actually had a Ferrari Pope mobile. That's cool. That, that is very cool. In 1988, he went to the Ferrari factory in Italy. And he didn't, for some reason, they didn't bring the Pope mobile. And he got into a Ferrari convertible a Ferrari Mondial, I, I think that's how it's pronounced, and stood up in the convertible and they drove him around the factory and all the crowds. And that was the only Ferrari Pope mobile. Now, uh, Ferrari Enzo gave um, John Paul II that Ferrari and then he auctioned it off. It sold for a million dollars. Then a few years later, it sold for six million dollars. And they were going to give it to money. And he said, instead, give it to the victims of a tsunami in Indonesia. Mm. Oh, so a lot nice. of times the Pope gets gifts of cars or motorcycles. Yeah. Yeah. He'll bless it, sign it, and then they'll auction it off and then they'll take that money to, you know, donate it to a cause. He's not out there tearing through the streets in hot rods, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Pope Francis just donate like a Lamborghini or something like that? Mm -hmm. It was a charity. Harley Davidson. Well, he gets gifts like that all the yeah, time. Yeah. Yes. He signed it. It sold for like 300000 or yeah, something yeah. like that. Do you know what the official color for... Pope mobiles are. Mercedes has an official designation for the color that they paint the Mercedes Pope mobiles. It's like a pearl white? Well, yeah, but it's an actual color. It's called Mystic White. Ooh. Yeah. So that's those like of you, the only color. That's the color. When, <laughs> when Mercedes is making a Pope mobile, they either make it in black or Mystic White. Oh, wow. So those of you in the market for a new car, ask for Mystic White. <laughs> You'll be just like the Pope. <laughs> So some of the other cars that have been used as the Pope mobile throughout the years, uh, there's been a, a GMC Sierra, John Paul II, uh, multiple uh, a, a Ford D series, which is like a big semi truck, which is pretty cool. That's weird. Yeah, it uh, depends on what he's doing, mm -hmm. right? You know, yeah. where he's at. Paul the sixth had a Lincoln Continental. Those are bad. Nice. Yeah, Those 1964 nice. Lincoln Continental. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, he would make Dr. Dre jealous in that thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. So multiple, yeah, like I said, a lot of Fiats, a lot of uh, Mercedes Benz. What about Pugo? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Big, yeah. Pug we used to, Pug my buddy Carlo yeah. used to drive one of those and we'd be like, Puget. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Puget coming. Pop, pop. When uh, John Paul II was in Paraguay, in 1988, he actually used a Pugat. Ah, Pugue. A Pugue. A Pugue 504. Pugue. And <laughs> a Pugue. what's funny is when Pope Francis went there uh, 20, well, almost 30 years later, the Pope Mosbiel, that Pugat was still there and it still worked. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's a good car. It's a great it's automobile. It's reliable. So, yeah, let's see what other. A Jeep. Nice. A Jeep oh, no Cherokee. Way. Really? An Isuzu. A Kia Sedona. Hmm. A Renault. 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 And Ryan, this one's going to hit home close for you, a Jeep Wrangler. 
Mm. I miss my Jeep. Poor that that poor Jeep Wrangler. I loved jumping that in the dunes of yeah. Jamaica Beach. Do we have that Galveston. video? Do we have the video? We do of YouTube? Have the video. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's on my Instagram. Oh, mm-hmm. we're gonna share yeah. that. So we actually have a video of Father Rich and Ryan <laughs> in slow motion, just absolutely crushing dunes and like looks like the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> well, yeah, it was like slow mo, <laughs> and we jumped it, and and Rich has just got this look in his eye, man. <laughs> And you're just like, whoa. He and I've was- got a mouthful of sunflower seeds and a few of them are like coming out of my mouth while I'm jumping. And then we don't have any video of me flipping the Jeep with Your you Your Jeep it. was actually a casualty of the first ever attempt to record the Catholic talk show. Yeah. It was. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Look long at that, story. dude. Yeah, man. Very long story. <laughs> long story. We're not going to get into that one. Oh, but- <laughs> boy. <laughs> If it, were, if it were not for flipping that, the Catholic talk shows, uh, the course of its history would be completely different. So, That's right. God, and let's not, let's God not, knows what he's doing. Let's not put pictures of my dad <laughs> up for everybody. I'm still more. I have that cloth. picture, though. I know. I'm sure you do. <laughs> do you know what the Pope's license plate is? Papa 1. No, close. Papa Ben. SCV 1. That is the Pope's official license plate for the Pope mobile. And it means uh, for in Latin, uh, status. Status Civitas Vaticana. Civitas Vaticana. One. Wow. Just like the chair? Nope. It's just the, Did you say Seta? It's the state of Vatican, Vatican City. City. Yeah. One. That's gotcha. what it means. Yeah. yeah. Now one. there's been, there's um, up to nine. So the number has went up to nine. It's always one though, but other Pope mobiles will have extra license plate and they go up to nine. You know what make a good TV show? You ever see Jay Leno's garage? What if they had <laughs> Pope, Pope Francis's garage? See, this is how the Vatican should really do some of yeah. their commercializing and, yeah. and some television shows. Yeah, yeah they I, need to get exhibit to go in there and pimp my Pope mobile. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Holy Father, we put a yes. confessional in here. <laughs> So, Exhibit, if you're listening in right now, we want to go with you to the Vatican. We're going to pimp that a heated Pope baptismal font. <laughs> <laughs> Automated sensors. Smoke comes out. <laughs> incense. Yeah, the smell of incense the is billowing out of the muffler. It's got a custom like chime. Does the oh, yeah. does the Gloria when you hit the... T- <laughs> no, I mean, that's like one of my questions is, that you, you know, we're talking about all these different rides, but I mean... You said one they left in a country, mm-hmm. and then you go to the Vatican, and there's what probably nine of them. Like, what, what do we got? Nine here? of them are inv- active, active. Okay, yeah. yeah. What's so our inventory here? Yeah, you know, like what, what does this look like? We have the secret archives, but there's a secret <laughs> garage too. <laughs> it's a car hole. You're so fancy with a garage. The garage. It's a car hole. Everyone knows that. <laughs> That's what we call it back in Ohio. Just a car hole. It's a hole for your Put car. it in the car hole. The Pope mobile that Pope John Paul II was riding when he when there was an assassination attempt on his life was a Fiat Campagnolo. Oh, that's right. It was a Fiat. Yeah. Wow. Our Lady Fiat. Wow. Wow. That's, that's man. what yeah. Our Lady that was, said to at, that's the so angel. Crazy. I, wow, that just blew my mind yeah. right now. Fiat mihi secundum verbum tum. Can we get a close up of Father Rich's face there? Yeah, it's mind blowing. It's like, man. like it looks like he's like, where am I right now? Yeah. That's awesome. I yeah. Did you ever that it was a fiat. That? Yeah. Yeah. Our, and oh, Our Lady wow. Fatima protected it. Yes. And it was Our Lady. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's mm-hmm. awesome, dude. I never connected that. Yeah. So after that, they really started taking precautions. Sure. And they were. Because there, the, there was no glass on that car. It no, was straight no, up. No, no. Yeah. And even prior to that. It was like a chop after, top. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's when the bulletproof stuff started right. coming mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they started putting the bulletproof casing around it and like the. I don't even know what you call it, the Pope case. Yeah, and then there's like a little door out the back. If he wants to get out, he walks around. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's necessary. I mean, there's so many people, millions and millions of people who come to see him. And without that, it really, it's, it looks like a barrier. It looks like a separation, but it actually serves the opposite purpose. It actually allows the Pope to reach more people, not prevent him from being reached. So it's a necessary function of safety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, another, here's a cool thing. You ever see the movie Cars by Disney? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My son. I've never been a car guy. I like cars, whatever. I don't care. Johnny loves cars more, more than anything. And the, he's three and he can drive. <laughs> like literally he can drive. Like he's got a little Lightning McQueen and he can go like turn corners, like navigate through things, pull the car into the garage in tight parking spaces, throw it in reverse. Like he's like the LeBron James of driving. <laughs> so I've seen cars probably 500 times. 
<laughs> easily, right? I mean, it's on constant replay in, in the Shield House. Such a good parent. I don't know. So Cars Two, the Pope Mobile is actually in Cars Two. That's right. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. You have a little figurine, don't yeah, you? I didn't bring it, Johnny. Oh, bummer. He didn't. He wouldn't let me bring it this time. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. I've never, is that the second? That's the second one. So when they're in the Grand Prix in Europe and they're in the Italian part of the race, the Pope is there. (laughs) Oh, that's cool. And the Pope is Pope Pinion the (laughs) fourth. I haven't seen cars too. Yeah. And and there's another episode, like a short where there's a, they're in Spain and like there's um, a priest car and he's like exhausty manifoldy like <laughs> but the pope is pope pinion the fourth in cars and he has a pope mobile now in cars almost every car their tires are called light years right mm-hmm. but there's a little easter egg in the movie if you look really close and if you catch it and you pause it the pope's car is the only one that has tires different and his are his tires are called altus via Hmm. Which means the high road. The high road. Yeah. The high road. Yeah. So Disney baked in a little Latin Easter egg into that movie on the Pope Mobile. <laughs> only funny. you, dude. Only you would pick up on stuff I've like seen that five hundred times. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. You probably caught it the first time. Though. I did. Like, well, I mean, pause it's, that. It's the Pope, <laughs> man. I'm you know, like Johnny. It's the Pope. Let us evaluate this even closer. He heard about it when they were filming it. <laughs> they good, actually consulted with him. <laughs> there's actually a great joke. So the Pope is out in the Pope mobile, right? And he's driving through the Italian countryside. He's on his way to Castel Gandolfo. And he's kind of bored and he goes to the driver. He's like, pull over. So the driver listens. It's the Pope. You listen to the Pope. And he says, I would like to drive the Pope mobile today. You know, he's, he's in one of the limos. And the driver's like, I don't know if that's a good idea, Holy Father. He's like, it'll be fine. I'm the Pope. Let me drive. So he's like, okay, I guess. So they switch spots. The driver goes into the back seat, rolls up the windows. It's a dark tinted, uh, you know, limousine. The Pope gets into the driver's seat and starts tearing off. I mean, he is doing 95 on the roads, just crushing corners. Well, a cop pulls him over. A cop sees this limousine cruising by and the cop pulls him over. And the car pulls off to the side of the road. And the... The officer walks up to the window, rolls down the window. Sir, do you know how fast? And he's like, oh, it's the Pope. So he's like, he looks at the back and there's tinted windows. He's like, don't go anywhere one second. So he goes back to his car, gets on the phone. He's like, chief, we got a problem. I just pulled someone over really important. I don't know what to do. He's like, well, who is it? Is it like the president or something? He's like, I think it's bigger than that. He's like, a celebrity? Who is it? He's like... I don't know. The Pope is his chauffeur, so I think it's God. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jesus in the backseat of the limousine. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. funny. That's true. So, yeah, that's, you know, that's a brief history of the Pope. Bill. We'll make sure that we share a lot of these images on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. But, you know, the Pope is pretty cool. I, I think it's cooler than the Batmobile. It is really cool. What, what would make a, you know, I mean, cars have kind of, developed here you know you got the mercedes right now it's kind of a classical looking pope mobile mm-hmm. you know not 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 like a pig right? it's it's pretty sharp but like well <clears throat> what kind well, of pope pope mobile would be pretty cool to make i mean think about all the cars that are out there i'm looking forward to the pope drone you know where you know the pope just comes over in a drone i like that throwing blessings yeah pope francis is that's cool. He drives his own car around Vatican City. Mm-hmm. And he's in an open air Pope Mobile most of the time. Yeah. He said he called it um, a sardine can and he said he doesn't <laughs> want to be in it. So when Pope Francis is driving around Vatican City, do you know what car he has? A Fiat. A 1984 Renault 4 with 186,000 miles on it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what he wants to drive because he said that priests should drive more simple cars because it's a means to an end and not a glorification. So when he was elevated to the papacy, was he, did he go out to the ancient car, used car lot? And I think he traded with another priest and oh. he did it as a purposeful sign of sacrifice. He's done that throughout his papacy, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, like I mean, when he got elected, he was like in a bus. With yeah, he went into the bus with the cardinals, yeah. yeah. 
He also drives a, a Ford Focus, but he drives himself. Mm -hmm. As Pope, he still drives himself. Now, Pope Benedict did not have a driver's license. <laughs> he never got a driver's <laughs> never license. Never got a driver's license, but he could drive a helicopter. Ah. So Pope Benedict drove the Pope copter. Get out of here. That's he, legit. He, he actually has a uh, aviation license. Hmm. Maybe he, maybe Pope Benedict will want to join us on our Hellahagen trip this uh, Ooh, next yeah. next year. Yeah, he'd like that. He could fly the helicopter. Yeah, he'd like it too. Yeah. Yeah, and when you get pulled over, it's like, I don't know, they're hella huggers. I think it's God. The, <laughs> Those the guys are really important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they so, got guns. <laughs> I think that leaves, that's a good question. And we could use this as a poll question. Who do you think would win in a race? Pope Benedict or Pope Francis? Both uh -huh. put them in evenly stocked. Cars. cars. They gotta be cars. Mobiles, right? Both yeah. put them in Pugas. Can we throw Papa Buono in there too? And as large as he is, like pulled by, you know, a hand pulled. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think a the Sedia Gestatoria yeah. is going to no. keep up with a Pope Mobile. It's just, <laughs> just my guess. A hand drawn rig show. No, I mean, you know, P Pope Francis has command over the Pugo, he, right? I mean, and he, the he dumpy car. And he's got the experience. But Pope. Benedict is from Germany, the land of precision. Bavarian Motor Company. He's a Bavarian engineering. He, yeah. yeah. My money's on Papa Benedicto, man. Dude, he's got it. I mean, if he could fly he a helicopter, up. he could drive a car. I could imagine. But, and I also think Pope Francis is probably very meticulous with his driving. I don't want to say he's a Sunday driver. But he would where, totally drive like my grandfather. What, how's your grandfather drive? My grandfather would drive 55 miles an hour. In a 70 mile hour zone. Wow. I don't know. Pope Francis is South American. Have you ever been there with the yeah. traffic? I mean, oh, they are, true. it's that's savagery true. on the road. So just he, like Rome. Yeah. So just he like might Rome. have a little bit of that uh, fight. road rage, a little bit of fighting him when he drives. Fight. Yeah. yeah the, the other thing, too, it was mentioned with the cars is like, it depends on what they're driving, too, because if you give, if you give, no, Papa we're giving Bene, them give, like something that's legit, I mean, it's, there's an advantage there. Well, I we're putting so. them in even. He was good cars. to that Ferrari community, so he could pull out the Ferrari Pope mobile and right. Mm, so, well, it's not going to be Pope Benedict and a Ferrari and Pope Francis and a Pugo. No, I'm saying the two handle the two cars differently. Well, uh, for right. heaven's sake, I mean, sake, you're, you're talking Pope about Francis a man and a machine here. Is not going to jump into a Ferrari. He's going to be in. A but for our race <laughs> and this poll, he will. <laughs> We're forcing him no, to do that. No, he won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, then don't participate. Oh, I'm going to participate all right. I'd say I'd say we were going to go with like a Mercedes or something. Let's just put a stock Mercedes 300 yeah. Pope Mobile. Okay. Like a V6 or something. No, they actually, they have to have special transmissions because they're so heavy. Special engines because there's so much bulletproofing and security on them and bomb shields underneath. They have to be specially built. They're extra long. I don't want them racing in a bulletproof. Why not, heavy man? Car. If they it's roll, it, they're going to be fine. Haven't you seen cars? I'm thinking like <laughs> death race right now, like the Pope's. <laughs> no, we're gonna we're gonna have them go around the uh, the Coliseum, just 500 laps. It'll be the Rome 500. <laughs> the Rome 500. <laughs> Good idea. I like that for yeah. for charity. We've got. I mean, we we're into the Vatican garage now, and we're producing shows, That's so right, we man. might as well it's with exhibit. <laughs> we might as well exhibit. pimp my Pope mobile. <laughs> we might as well get into racing now. I, I you know? think so. <laughs> this is the last uh, Catholic talk show. We're, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're moving on. We've, yeah. we've just talked ourselves into something huge. Bigger and better ideas. Join <laughs> us at the Coliseum next year. <laughs> we out, my job. Peace. <laughs> Good. Uh, I don't even have the Inquisition today. This is perfect. Oh, no, you do. Well, yes, this yeah. is it. Oh, we're look, wrapping it he's up. He's like, oh, I don't even have an Inquisition. I'm out of here. No, <laughs> you're not getting off that easy. Going to the Coliseum. Front row tickets. All right. <laughs> to now, the death race. Now, we kind of talked about this a little bit. And this is a softball one, right? Okay. This is, you know, this is a 55 mile an hour question. Yeah. You better be able to answer that after I just couched it like that. If you don't, you're going to look bad. Well, dude, you guys try to make me look bad every show. I don't try to. You just it just comes naturally it's to so me. Easy. It's, it's just like so one of those easy. rotisserie things. You guys think. So you'll so see this easy. on the internet a lot. People criticize atheists and, you know, commenters on YouTube or whatever. They say, well, if the Pope is so trusting in God and God is watching out for him, why does he have bulletproof glass? Is he not trusting God's will? Is he not trusting that God will protect him? Why does he have to put bulletproof glass between him and people. Is that a sign? And this is their contention. That is a sign of a lack of faith that God will protect him. Oh, that's ridiculous. You know, 
I, I, you know, I really want to like develop as I'm listening to these inquisitions. You know, Tom Selleck in Blue Bloods. You bring up Blue Bloods so God, much. I love that That's show, dude. Wahlberg. Seriously. I'm a Wahlberg fan. Donnie what, thing. No, but like, dude, think of like Tom Selleck's mustache. I need to grow out I, my I, mustache. You know what? I've spent an inordinate amount of time thinking of Tom Selleck's mustache. You know how he like. Already? Already. <laughs> I think about it all the time. <laughs> Ryan, has a priest ever told you? Like he does you, this thing with his lips. Like, Ryan, mm. has a priest ever told you? Ryan, I need you to think about Tom Selleck's mustache. Like, <laughs> you, just, you just close the window. You're like, no, thanks, Ponder. <laughs> now, this by far has been my greatest attempt of stalling because I totally distracted both of you with the oh, Tom that's Selleck good. thing. That's, that's good. what I was thinking. So thanks for playing your you cards. You didn't even call me out on it. We didn't even time. know. That's now how we good know. it was. Boom. Boom. Okay. Deceitful, but that was a, so, <laughs> you're up to your Jesuit trickery again. I am. I love the Jesuit trickery. So my Jesuit truth for the day is... So this is the way I look at it. You're that, not a Jesuit, by the way, just in case. But I have a lot this. of love for the Jesuits. That's right. So uh, we have a responsibility to the faithful, as well as the Swiss Guard from previous episodes. Mm -hmm. There is a responsibility of the people of God to protect the Holy Father and to pray for the Holy Father, both spiritually and temporally, physically, all of that. So it's the responsibility to keep the Holy Father safe. But in all of the papacies, from John Paul II after the assassination attempt to Pope Benedict, now to Pope Francis, they continually to avail themselves in vulnerable positions where potentially they could be hurt or harmed. I think of the people jumping over, you know, barricades, attacking Pope Benedict, mm -hmm. attacking Pope Francis. You know, these things happen, but they're still resolved to opening themselves up to a wider ministry, and they are faithfully entering into that each and every day. And the suffering that they're exposed to, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine what they're exposed to. But regardless, you know, you look at what our responsibility is. That's what you see in a Pope mobile being mm -hmm. developed in the security mm -hmm. factors of making sure that the Holy Father, the person of the Holy Father, is as safe as he can possibly be. Yeah. And before we, we, you know, wrap this up. I mean, God makes killer monkeys. I mean, monkeys, the monkeys hurt what people. The and like, what if you're, you if, the about? Pope, if the Pope's, listen, if the, the Pope, listen to me, if the Pope is going to go to the- I'm not listening to you, Ryan. You're talking about monkeys. Killer monkeys. Okay, no, hold on. Listen, okay, you no, got to hear me let's out. Let's monkeys. Let's hear him talk. The monkeys okay. are in the trees. They're All looking right, for the Popes and the monkeys. So look, dude, the- God makes killer monkeys. Okay, let's see you get out of this. Monkeys kill people, okay? And and if you've got a potmobile mobile and you're driving through the Congo, you know, and you're blessing people, one of those monkeys could jump out start and chucking bananas off of the top of it. <laughs> so it's we not just bullets. I mean, this is where I'm going with this. It's not just bullets, guys. I mean, there's other things that are that, can, that are danger. When Mercedes, when Mercedes designs the Pope mobile, they think about bombs, bullets, and killer monkeys. Mm -hmm. There's a whole engineering department for the deterrence of the threat I just, of killer I just monkeys. want this what to be a balanced. You, I want it to be a balanced discussion. Yeah, that was okay. Bad. You just balanced that it was, perfectly. There's killer monkeys, guys. Perfect. You just deal with it. You're going to be having nightmares tonight about killer monkey. But don't, doesn't a person also have a duty to protect themselves? Not just the the laity and those in charge of protecting. It's the public. prudence. It's. I mean, they have a duty, a spiritual duty to God to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. Is that not true? It's stewardship. Right. Stewardship over the temple and and without a doubt. I mean, you look at you look at Jesus's own life and ministry. He re retreated a number of times in the midst of so many people that wanted to seize him and kill him. Yeah. And there were moments of retreat until the timing came about. Right. Where he revealed and manifested to us that perfect self-deposit of martyrdom and revealed for us faith in its perfection. I've never actually you heard that argument that Jesus retreated to. Mm -hmm. That's actually really good. Several times. I'm going to give flying colors on the answer really? to this one. Yeah. yeah. Praise well the Lord. Cheers soul. with our Catholic well, hey, talk it, show man. one. That was excellent. Thank you, guys. Mm. Good episode, guys. Wonderful. Now, uh, everyone listening, make sure to go to catholictalkshow.com. You can subscribe to us there. You can follow us and like us. Make sure you go to our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. Join in the conversation. We'll post our poll questions. We'll post pictures and the things that we talked about. And we really appreciate it when you do. Yeah. And if we have an amazing, wealthy donor out there who wants to buy the Catholic talk show, a Pope mobile, and outfit that baby, we could come to your town in that Pope mobile mm -hmm. and do a show Even on the road. Even if it's a Puget. A Puget.
Um, and then you don't need a wealthy benefactor. That's right. That's true. <laughs> if anyone's got like right. six bucks a out mediocre, there. <laughs> a mediocre benefactor. Yeah. Just a nice guy. Just a nice guy if there's a nice guy Not even that nice. Just someone who doesn't like us. Like, here, here's a pew go. Yeah, if you have a dumpy drive around car, in your shame. Just give us your dumpy car. We don't need a car. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we enjoyed this episode and uh, thank you guys for listening and we'll catch you on the roadways next week. Vroom, vroom. God bless. God bless.